It's Christmas time. We get Christmas music. I love Christmas. How many of you guys love Christmas season, the Christmas season, Christmas lovers out there? So Kelly in our family is my wife, and uh, she actually, my family's the only family where Kelly's the wife. Uh, <laughs> but every year, she's great at creating Thanksgiving traditions, and, uh, or Christmas traditions. And in our family, Christmas traditions start at Thanksgiving, or the day after Thanksgiving, when we put up the tree, and uh, one of the things Kelly does is she always has like a pre-Christmas gift we get while we're putting up the tree. And almost every time, it's a Christmas ornament that'll be a memento of that year, and we'll put it on the tree together, and that'll be a kind of a nice thing. But this year, Kelly went all out in uh, her gift for me. And uh, this year, she decided that she would make me a personal gift. It's a stocking <laughs> the size of Montana. You know, it's the monster stocking. And this is not just that she didn't get this for me. She made this for me from a ball of yarn. Is that amazing? I don't know if you guys are amazed at that, but I'm absolutely amazed that she would make me this in my beautiful Illini colors. And my hope is that if I hang it by the chimney, then uh, that fat guy will bring something that he'll put inside of it that will match the size of the stocking. You know, like... A plasma TV or a Porsche, you know, could fit right in there. Now, you can turn a ball of yarn into a stocking. Yeah, that's a possible thing to do. But it takes time and it takes energy. It takes effort. And you have to do it with a kind of persistency that keeps on uh, pushing it forward. It doesn't happen in one time. Transformation does not happen in a single moment. And whether you're talking about a stocking or Nehemiah or a person's spiritual life, transformation doesn't happen in a moment. I know that was true for me. You know, I grew up in the church and kind of played uh, the church game and really was running from God in my heart at the time when I was in high school. And, uh, you know, the truth is I like the eternal fire insurance part of the Christian message, but I didn't like the change your life part of the Christian message. And so I played games at church, but really lived my life independent from God. And that made itself manifest in all kinds of ways. The kind of language that I used, partying, cussing, lying in order to impress people, especially in order to impress girls, and other things that I would not say from the stage of a church. So the truth about me is I didn't make a real serious decision to follow Jesus until I got to college. And the story behind that is for another message, but... When that happened, because I grew up in a church, I knew all the things that should change in my life. And some of them did change. Some of them were like, whammo, in an instant, they changed. It shocked me, like my language. You know, I gave up any kind of curse words or swear words, like from that moment forward, and it was not even hard for me. Or getting drunk, same kind of thing. It just wasn't a temptation for me anymore. But there was other stuff in my life that dogged me for years. I mean, this desire to impress people by shading the truth still lurks in the dark corners of my heart. I remember after I first got married, my expectation was that the way my thoughts wandered and the thoughts that I had about women, that those would be gone. I kind of thought they'd be gone after I commit my life to Christ, but I knew that didn't happen. So I thought when I get married, you know, all that stuff will be taken care of. And I remembered after I got married, it wasn't taken care of. So I found this like wise old dude, like 45. (laughs) And I asked him, you know, this is what I'm struggling with. Does this stuff go away? And he said, you know, hang in there, my friend. This is a lifelong struggle for men. And I was like, I thought when I got married, that would take care of it. No. You know, he's 45, like ancient, and he's still dealing with it. Sometimes I feel like, you know, the things that I offer to God, I want him to change them inside of me, and I offer them out to God, but my fist is still clenched. And the truth is, even now, after 27 years of walking with Jesus, he's still doing a reform inside of me, because there's stuff inside of me that still needs to be reformed. I don't know if you can identify with that at all today. If you've got junk in your life that still needs to be reformed, uh, if you do, uh, then this is going to be a really helpful message for you. If you don't have any junk in your life, uh, then you get a pass on today's message. You can just surf Twitter during the message or something and come back when the worship comes back on. But I think for most of us, Nehemiah 13 has something to say to our lives.